Tree Group. Connecting people, building communities, helping clients to build multi-generational wealth through real estate. So I have a question about the capital loss. Mm. So the value of homes definitely have dropped uh, since last year. And what if somebody spends a lot of money on renovation and by the time that they come to the market, based on what they spent and what they are selling, there are some losses. Mm -hmm. So um, how, what would be your response for that? It's, it's a, a real question nowadays. If it's your principal residence, there's never any, any um, there's no capital gain, so there's no capital loss. But this would apply to a, a rental property. That's right. And with interest rates going the way they are, they've gone from maybe a positive cash flow to negative. And if it's negative, you have to make up the difference. So if we decide to sell, then we're looking at the potential for capital gain or capital loss. So capital loss is created when what you paid for the property, plus all the renovations, plus the cost of purchasing the property. Then you subtract off what you sell it for and the cost of the sale, which and breaking mortgage is one of those costs. And if it's negative, you have a capital loss. Now, unfortunately, capital losses can only be applied against other capital gains, either in the past or in the future. So you, you, there's no tax advantage immediately to having a capital loss when you sell a property unless you have past capital losses, or sorry, capital gains, and then you can actually do a loss carry back and, and or if you have capital gains in the future, then you can apply those capital gains to the capital loss you incurred. So it's a little tricky. It's a T1A form that has to be filled out, but it, it's, it's valuable. And then CRA will actually go and adjust those prior year returns. You don't get it on your current return, but they adjust the years in which you had a capital gain. Mm -hmm. Is there any limit for the future? You know, how long in the future can you apply the capital loss? They, they've really changed the, the rules. I believe it's now about 20 years that you can do back or forwards. Okay, and then the capital loss, if let's say you have 100,000 capital loss, should you use it once or can it be split? Uh, that loss can be split between um, a couple of transactions? It, it, um, it has to be booked in the year that you sell the property. It booked. Now it's up to you when you use it. And most people like to use it sort of right away. But you can, if you, if you had a really good year a few years ago and you had a big capital gain, then it'll have a, a bigger impact uh, when you apply it to that year. But it's your choice as to when you apply it. Then okay. you don't have a crystal ball. You don't know what's going in the future. One comment would be that, yes, you may lose on that one property this year, but if you sold another property this, this current year and made money, the capital gain and capital losses are applied against each other. And then looking at what's left over, even if there is a capital gain, you can still take older capital losses and apply it against it. So there's, there's a lot of twists and turns. So the leftover can be carried on? Yes, okay. any, any loss can be carried on. Capital gains have to be reported and be taxed at the time. Capital losses can okay. only be applied against capital gains past or future. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. So um, we have another question that uh, we have encountered several times last year and this year, and is about um, people who are non-residents and what are the tax implications and rules around that when they own a property. So that's a timely subject. There's been a lot of conversation over the last few years about non-residents owning properties and both the federal and municipalities have put in a, a tax on vacant properties, i.e. properties that are not rented out. That's municipal and, and not part of even our, our tax returns. But the, the issue comes, there's two issues when the property is rented and it's a Canadian property and it's a non-resident or deemed non-resident of Canada, then the rental, you're, they would like you to have a, a rental agent who the rents get paid to. Property management. Property management yeah. type thing. And that property manager would send 25% of your gross rent to the federal government on a monthly basis. This will be applied against your 
tax return when you file your Canadian tax return for a rental property in Canada. And then, you know, if you owe more tax, you pay, but theoretically you would get some money back because then you get to look at all your expenses of running the property. The government's just protecting themselves, but people making sure that they do report income in Canada. Because remember, I always say everybody has to pay their fair share. Yeah. Now, when the property gets sold, that's when it gets really interesting. Lawyers are usually pretty good with their knowledge, but they will, the lawyer is supposed to retain 25% of the mm -hmm. gross sale. That's gross, the amount that it sells for, not less expenses. So 25%, they withhold. They may keep it or they may send it to the government and the government will be waiting for a T2062 form to be filed at which time they'll take a look at how much money that you have sent the government and how much you actually are responsible for, then you can get a refund on the difference. That form has to be filed within 10 days of closing. It can be filed early, but it has to be filed within 10 days. The There's a lot of information there. It needs your name and or the, the purchaser's name and the address and the seller's name and address and their representative's information. They don't ask a lot of financial information, it's what you what you paid for it and or what you sold it for and, and then the 25% gets remitted. So that's something to be very aware of. Penalties are can be severe if it's not done and the government will know because all sales get reported through MPAC and CRA and MPAC. Best friends? Have, yes, they are. They're in cahoots. They, they're not necessarily best friends, but it's legislation. CRA has access to all property sales. So they have access to the assessed value or any sales transactions, and they can really they, monitor what's going on. They know, MPAC knows what you sell the property for, yeah. and CRA knows, so yeah. don't start to fudge with those numbers. So um, what if the non-residents who own a property, they do not file taxes, um, for multiple years, and what's the remedy for that? There could be challenges, especially if they owe money. Uh, the government will accept uh, multiple year tax filings. You might <clears throat> go to what's called the Voluntary Disclosure Program and ask for forgiveness on filing multiple years late. They only care, of course, if you owe money, but if you're a non-resident and haven't filed, it would be best to get your returns done and send a, a apology letter to the voluntary disclosure people. They may or may not accept your reasons for late filing. And all they can do is remove or reduce penalties and interest. They cannot waive that stuff and you're still responsible for the taxes that are owing. And even if there is no tax owing, you're still responsible for filing your, your tax return. However, there won't be any penalties or, or interest because you don't owe any money. So what I'm hearing, the property management accountant and the lawyer really need to be in communication. And property management needs to make sure that 25% of rental income is um, simply given to CRA. The accountant will make sure that the form is filed and at the same time in communication with the lawyer if there is a sales transaction. Yeah, that's two distinct uh, operations here. One is the rental, and that's where the property manager and submits the 25% and you file your tax return, so your accountant, or you can do it yourself, uh, file your, your personal tax return, even as a non-resident, and uh, file it with all your expenses. So the other point is when you sell, then that's when the, the lawyer yeah. and the accountant, lawyer does not do the 2062, uh, the well, I, I've never met one that does it. He just sort of get the accountant to do it. They just do the, and they just withhold. They, they withhold, and they shouldn't notify the non-resident who should notify their accountant yeah. to get this form in because it's it's really important. I don't know what the penalties are, but uh, you don't want to be giving money to the government when you're going to have to file it anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, Vlad, about that? No, I think that uh, we've covered the topic pretty well. Perfect. 
Triple Tree Crew, connecting people, building communities, helping clients to build multi-generational wealth through real estate.